two minutes. One fifty nine. Vehicle internal. One fifty five. Spot signature start. One fifty. Securing Centaur LH two. Securing Centaur L two. Centaur hydrogen and oxygen are now at flight level and topping is being terminated. 140. Launch enabled. 137. SDSR. One twenty. OCU is armed. SPS count started. EDS ascent. EDS armed and ready means the emergency detection system is now armed. One and minute. that basically just means Run. that if Run. it detects Static. something, it will change the yes. support system on star layer and fire Thank automatically. Space will push itself far up and away from the rocket. We're talking a mile up and a mile out in just a matter of seconds. I certainly don't expect to see that today. 40. How was that flight for us? Thirty. Thirty seconds. Centaur at flight, Chris. Equals no pressure for flight. Twenty-five. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Starliner. All systems are go for liftoff. Go Starliner. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, and liftoff. Starliner is headed back to space on the shoulders of Atlas, powered by a workforce dedicated to its success. We have confirmation of a good MET epic timer on Starliner. This is the first planned throttle down for Atlas in preparation for Max Q. Max Q, Max Q. Right now, Atlas Air Force is at the highest starliner. Atlas will face during the upcoming climb. Atlas V and Starliner are now supersonic. Vehicle now throttling up. Up next in about 20 seconds, Starliner's two solid rocket boosters will run out of fuel and burn out. And we have burnout on both SRBs. Good crew module forward link connection. Already ready is throttling back up to full thrust. Now that we pass the solid rocket booster burnout, you'll soon see those two solid rocket boosters separate from the vehicle. Atlas V now weighs just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of 2,800 pounds per second. And we have indication of SRB jettison. Atlas continues to ascend using to sea level. Already ready is throttling down slightly as expected. Engine response looks good. Teams here on the ground confirming Starliner has a good trajectory. We're now two minutes and 55 seconds into today's flight. We're now an altitude of 56 kilometers.
our next throttle down will be to control acceleration forces, uh, limit forces on the crew to be below 4 Gs. That is safe for an extended period of time. One minute remaining in this burn. One minute to be go. Marty Money is now throttling to maintain 3.5 G acceleration on the vehicle. The Starliner flying off the uh, east coast at this point at an uh, altitude of 80 kilometers now, moving at a rate of 1,187 miles per hour. It's just past. For those of you watching along the coastline, you might be able to see this launch. We have Pico, booster engine cutoff. We have successful sta success staging. Pre start on the RL 10s. We have ignition on both RL 10s. Centaur is now going to closed loop steering. Just passed through several milestones. Teams here on the teams here on the ground reporting that all are looking good. Ascent cover jettison there that provided that yeah, air structure to the top of Starliner, protecting the docking equipment during ascent. And now that Starliner and Centaur are free of the atmosphere, well into the vacuum of space, that air skirt has been jettisoned. Now, six minutes into today's launch, Starliner continuing to accelerate up the North American coast. Everything going smoothly so far. Starliner and Centaur have been ticking through their ascent milestones right on track, including the booster stage separation, Centaur ignition, and aeroskirt jettison. A number of status calls we'll be listening for in the next several minutes, but if all continues to go well, the next major milestone to watch out for is the main engine cutoff when Starliner will be officially in space. We heard a report from uh, ULA's team. We had a, a little bit of an overperformance on the booster, but the, that's a good well, thing. Centaur is more than capable of adjusting on the fly in its closed loop performance. Centaur pressures are stable. Centaur looks good. Flight control teams are also monitoring the performance of the sublimator on Starliner right now. The sublimator is what is used to control cabin temperatures going up to space and coming home. Normally, we use uh, the radiators on the service module, but uh, those are not powered up until we get into orbit. We heard confirmation that St. John's abort zone is open. We pre-select these 
uh, splashdown zones in the case of any needed aborts. Um, the first one would be the Saint off the coast of St. John's, Nova Scotia. We just heard the flight dynamics officer report everything is pretty good. Flight controller here in Mission Control confirming that our main engine main engine cutoff time is looking stable. It is going to be 11 minutes and 50 seconds into the flight. We are now 8 minutes and 50 seconds in, so that's uh, still about 3 minutes to go until we hit that milestone. Now, one of the next calls that we will hear is that the Shannon abort zone will be open. Now, you can see on your screens that Starliner is making its way up the North American coast, just starting to go into the Atlantic Ocean, Northern Atlantic Ocean. We pre-plan our flight trajectories so uh, we would not aboard a crew into the middle of the ocean. They'd be near enough to land for a quick and speedy recovery. So we're still in that St. John's abort zone. Expect to hear that Shannon open call coming. And we just heard that call. Shannon now open. Sister Mike could potentially make that abort landing off the coast of Ireland now if needed, but so far no reason to think it will be. Starliner currently 153 kilometers above uh, the Pacific Ocean, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, and that's about 95 miles. Sixty seconds to Miko. We are eleven minutes into today's flight. Centaur and Starliner are passing Mach twenty three, Mach twenty three point three and counting. Altitude of just under one hundred and fifty kilometers. Miko's main engine cutoff when both of dual, and the dual engine Centaur RL10s are scheduled to shut down. That again is coming up at 11 minutes and 50 seconds. About five seconds away now. And we have Miko 1. Center engines are cut off. RCS is now at engine cut off. So. Right on time. Starliner is in space, but not done with the ascent milestones. Mm Hearing -hmm. in the room that it was a good main engine cut off. The next milestone we'll be looking for is launch vehicle separation, when Starliner will separate from Centaur booster and fly on its own. Even after that happens, we'll have about 15 minutes until our final major milestone in today's ascent, the orbital insertion burn that will raise the perigee our low point of Starliner's orbit out of the Earth's atmosphere. So stick with us, we're not done yet. Now 12 minutes and 30 seconds into today's flight. We just heard our Atlas console position report a spacecraft separation for 1450 after launch. Still about two minutes away. Now, right now, ULA teams are confirming that Centaur is in a good configuration for separation, making sure that all of the 
pressures in the tanks are stable and it will be able to conduct a proper disposal burn later. Flight control teams here in the room are moving to their insertion checklists. Sixty seconds of spacecraft set. Centaur has now achieved its separation attitude. Just under a minute now to go until the launch vehicle separation. The team here on the ground reporting that Starliner and Centaur are both ready for it in the right orientation and on a stable trajectory. Thirty seconds to start on our separation. Centaur is holding attitude for Starliner separation. Ten seconds to separation. And we have confirmation of Starliner separation. And Starliner is flying alone on its way to orbit. Confirm good LV separation. Thanks, ULA, for a smooth ride to space. And thank you, Dylan, for your help on that ascent commentary. That milestone behind us, the next one we'll be watching for is that orbital insertion burn. That is going to raise the perigee or the low point of Starliner's orbit out of the Earth's atmosphere, putting it uh, in space for its full orbit. Uh, that's an important, important milestone to reach. It's going to be a 45-second burn. It'll change Starliner's velocity about 85 meters per second or 190 miles per hour. And that's going to be coming up at the 31-minute mark in today's orbit. We're now... Just under 16 minutes into today's flight.